Hi everyone, this is Dr. Manu Krishnan K and today we will be discussing about the topic the blood supply of the brain and the blood supply of the brain is carried out by the circle of villus or a structural arrangement called as the circular arteriosus. It's an arterial anastomotic circle present in the interpedangular cistern and it is polygonal in shape and an anastomosis between the internal carotid and the vertebrobasilar system of arteries forms the circle of villus and the extent it is between the superior border of pons and the medial longitudinal fissure. So the formation of circle of villus. So these are the components which forms the circle of villus. The first one, the anterior communicating artery then the anterior cerebral artery, the internal carotid artery, the posterior communicating artery and the posterior cerebral artery. So the same formation we will see in detail here. So let's see how it is formed. So I'll start from the vertebral arteries from either side of the neck through the foramen transverse arium there are two arteries coming up and that is termed as the vertebral arteries and they unite to form a single artery here that is the basilar artery and as it enters the intracranial region it splits into two arteries that is the posterior cerebral arteries. Now we'll move on to the major blood supply of brain there is an artery known as the internal carotid artery there are two in number and this internal carotid artery again gives off two branches here the anterior cerebral artery which goes anteriorly then there is a middle cerebral artery which runs towards the middle part of the brain so this is not a circle yet to complete the circle there are two communicating arteries the first one is the anterior communicating artery which connects between the two anterior cerebral arteries. So the right and the left anterior cerebral arteries are connected by the anterior communicating artery. While there is another branch from the internal carotid which communicates with the posterior cerebral artery. And that communicating branch is termed as the posterior communicating artery. So here you can see, now the circle is complete, you have a circular system here and this supplies the brain without any disruptions. So this is how the circle of villus is formed. So I will revise once again. So here we have the vertebral arteries, they join to form the basilar artery and that basilar artery splits into posterior cerebral arteries. Then we have the internal carotid artery entering the cranium and from there it gives off a branch that is an anterior cerebral artery, the left and right anterior cerebral arteries. Then we have the left and right middle cerebral arteries. Then there are two communicating branches, one between the two left and right anterior cerebral arteries that is the anterior communicating artery and we have the posterior communicating artery that connects between the posterior cerebral artery and the internal carotid. So this is how the circle is completed. So this defines the circle of villus. The functional importance of the circle of villus. It equalizes the pressure of blood flow to the two sides of the brain as it is the main collateral channel. So since it is a circular manner, the pressure will be equal in all the directions and it also provides an alternative route through which the blood entering the internal carotid artery or the basilar artery may be distributed to any part of the cerebral hemisphere. So irrespective of the artery, whatever blood that is reaching this particular circular network, it will reach up to all the regions. So thus by we can prevent any damages caused by the reduced blood supply. So that is the importance of the circular network system. The branching pattern of the circulophilus. Grossly it is classified into two branching patterns. The first one is the central branches and the cortical branches. As the central branches suggest, 
they pass deep into the substance of cerebral hemisphere to supply the structures within it while the cortical branches they ramify the term ramify means to branch so they branches on the surface of the cerebral hemispheres and supply the cortex so this is how the branching pattern is categorized grossly so the first one the central branches the central branches are six main groups which can be named as the andromedial group postromedial group the right and left androlateral and the right and left postrolateral so these are the major groups which are formed from the central branches so here you can see the andromedial one it is arising from the anterior cerebral and the anterior communicating arteries so we have seen both these arteries before in the diagram then the postromedial branches they arise from the posterior communicating and the proximal part of posterior cerebral arteries while the right and left androlateral arises mainly from the middle cerebral artery while the right and left posterolateral from the lateral part of the posterior cerebral artery so this is how the six main groups are originating then we have the cortical branches so the cortical branches are that which lies over the surface of the cerebral hemispheres right so the first we have the anterior cerebral artery which we have seen arising from the internal carotid artery so these are the branches the orbital branch frontopolar branch callosal marginal branches and the pericallosal branch so let's have a look how they are formed so i'm just drawing a rough diagram of the cerebrum here so this is the rough diagram of the cerebral hemispheres that to the medial surface and you can see the corpus callosum and i'm drawing the pons and medulla here it's a rough diagram for your knowledge so here you can see i'll start with the artery the first one that is the anterior cerebral artery so it reaches the anterior part then a part of it goes to the orbital surface so this is the orbital branch and the other one goes to the frontal pole that is frontopolar artery then we have a major branch that goes along with the periphery of the callosal sulcus and that is termed as the pericallosal artery which will give off many branches here so this one is the pericallosal artery here and here we have the calloso marginal artery that gives off the branches here so by this we can understand the orbital branch is supplying the orbital surface of the cerebrum while the frontopolar branch supplies the frontal pole then the calloso marginal branch here the calloso marginal branch supplies the medial frontal gyrus the paracentral lobule and the precuneus while the last one that is the pericu pericallosal branch it supplies the corpus callosum and the cingulate gyrus so these are the major branches which are arising from the anterior cerebral artery the next one is the middle cerebral artery which have branches supplying the frontal lobe parietal lobe and the temporal lobe so the first one the branches to the frontal lobe includes the orbito frontal branch precentral branch and the central branch while the branches to the parietal lobe includes the anterior parietal branch and the posterior parietal branch and the branches to the temporal lobe consist of anterior temporal branch and a posterior temporal branch so let's see how it is formed so here i am just drawing a diagram of the suprolateral surface of the cerebrum so here we have the frontal pole here we have the lateral sulcus and i'm just drawing a rough central sulcus here this is the occipital pole here so now we'll add up the arteries which are supplying them so the middle cerebral artery that is coming from here 
it gives off a branch that is going to the orbital surface of the frontal lobe that is the orbitofrontal artery then we have another branch arising from it which is supplying the precentral area and that is the precentral artery then we have a particular branch that is going through the central sulcus here and that is nothing but the central artery then we have the third one that is here which is supplying the anterior part of the parietal lobe that is anterior parietal artery then we have another branch here which supplies the posterior part of parietal lobe and that is termed as posterior parietal artery and the only lobe left is the temporal lobe here so the temporal lobe will be supplied by two arteries which are the posterior temporal artery here and the anterior temporal artery here so these are the branches which are arising from the middle cerebral artery now let's come to the posterior cerebral artery which is having two branches which are the temporo occipital branch and the internal occipital branch which divides into parieto occipital and calcarine branch so if you just observe closely you will come to know that the names of the branches are in par with the sulci the name of the sulci so the parieto occipital sulcus you have studied in the previous classes calcarine sulcus you have seen so these are the arteries which are corresponding to those sulci and that's why they have got the name like parieto occipital artery branch and the calcarine branch of internal occipital artery so these are the posterior cerebral artery branches so the same thing i'll be representing here with a rough diagram so here you can see the frontal lobe then i'm drawing the temporal lobe here here will be the brain stem and let's add up the arteries here so the posterior cerebral artery it is coming from here then it gives of a major branch that is the temporo occipital artery that will divide and uh, supplies the temporal lobe the remaining parts of the temporal lobe and the occipital lobe so this is the branching pattern of the uh, temporo occipital artery while the internal occipital artery will be coming here and in the medial surface you have seen the calcarine sulcus and parieto occipital sulcus so it will be dividing into two corresponding to that particular sulci and they are named as the calcarine artery and the parieto occipital branch so these are the major artery and the branches which are arising from the circle of willis so this is how you should be knowing the circle of willis so i'll just repeat the circle of willis once and we will conclude the class so here you have a clear idea about the circle of willis which is formed by two vertebral arteries basilar artery posterior cerebral artery then the internal carotids which forms the anterior cerebral artery the right and left one then the middle cerebral artery and two communicating branches which are the anterior communicating artery and the posterior communicating artery so this is how the circle of willis is formed thank you